Well, good evening, Internet, and welcome to Let's Talk Board Games from Diary of a Lincoln Geek. Tonight is episode seven. I say we've got a wonderful special guest tonight, but first, just a quick message from our sp sponsors, who are, when I can get my presentation sorted, uh, by fullbodyarmors.com. They do some amazing full-size, size, really de detailed cosplay outfits, really amazing stuff. The Mark, Mark one, one War Machine is just superb. Woo I'll say they are, are absolutely amazing. And if you want that all important discount, make sure to use the hashtag D-O-A-L-G when purchasing. I'll say, what, what is it, Chris? 10% discount, something like that? Uh, I think, it, if I remember correctly, it's a $100 discount, but I will double check. I'm ready for next time. Yes, but still, it, it is a good dis discount. So uh, go check, check them out. Some amazing things and some yeah. really good projects in the pipeline, which I can't wait to see, see when I'm they finish. I'm particularly excited about Iron Spider. Yes. So without yeah. further ado, let's introduce you to the guys tonight. So we've got a full, full ha house to tonight, but that's obviously not, not who you're here for. We're, so let's say a spe big special get hello to our special guest, Wong Min Lee, from the Pegasus game. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. That's welcome. Welcome. Nice to be here. Yes. Thanks for having me. No, it's great Great to ha have you, Wong Min. And so we should hear from you, from you in a bit. So in the meantime, let's have a quick chat about what we've been playing. So. What's people have been playing at the moment? I know Gregor hasn't got, got a picture there, but he'll tell you why in a sec. So Chris has been, Surprise. <laughs> Chris has been play, playing his uh, very special Chris, Christmas present, the Hogwarts Ch Battle Expansion, Charms and Potions. Uh, our resident digital geek, Mr. Le Leakey, is going to be talking about Game of Thrones, digital mm -hmm. edition on Steam. Becca has got Sherlock Holmes' The Thames Murders. And uh, I'll be sharing my Christmas present, Subterra. So, Gregor, what's tell us all about Senate Magazine? Uh, yes, that's this thing here, what I am holding. Uh, basically, it, it's uh, rather than talking about a board game, I wanted to open by talking about a magazine about board games. Um, this is a relatively new thing. It was kick-started at the beginning of what is now last year. Weird to think of it. 2020 is over, apparently. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> Uh, this uh, it's I, never I, over. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel as well. Yeah, this is a really cool magazine, and I, I really like it. And I think that it's it's done differently to a lot of other hobbyist magazines that I've seen. Uh, it's printed in a really nice sort of small magazine format. It's all um, sorry, I'm kind of a print media nerd when it comes to this sort of stuff. <laughs> but uh, the, yeah, it's. Uh, it's all on like actual cards, not glossy. So if you ever do want to put it down, it is recyclable. Um, but yeah, the, the content as well, um, it, in the first 12 pages, they preview um, a bunch of games that are due to come out, either about to be kickstarted or actually ready to be published, about to ship. Um, and then behind that, all sorts of other features and interesting mm -hmm. Uh, reviews and insights into gaming. You can see the issue that I am holding. You can see some of the spreads on the page that George has in his presentation. Um, there's a whole uh, interesting selection of artwork. Um, the spread that's on the right on the picture there uh, is all about uh, games with more serious themes, uh, like holding on Life of Illica and all that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it's an it's an interesting little read um, for the price of RRP seven quid an issue. Um, it's I really like it. This particular edition that I've only just subscribed to it, so I don't know what the first two editions were like. I presume they're similar. Um, the main thing I like about it is that the centre fold pages fold out, and you get a proper nice little um, wow, wow, centre cool. fold That's of so all cool. the um, all the art by the art uh, the featured artiste. Um, nice. awesome. yeah, it's really nice. It's put together really well. Um, there is a wide range of contributors, but a lot of the the bulk, a lot of the little things, a lot of the little reviews and previews of games, uh, all seem to be written by one guy. And there's quite a lot in here, so I imagine he's quite tired. Uh, but <laughs> it's, um, it, it's cool. I really like it. I think it's nice to see uh, that there's an audience for this sort of thing. 
I quite like the language in it as well. Like it's easy to read. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can I can imagine it. It, it does appeal at this kind of time, uh, particularly with everything that's been going on in the world. Um, it, and it kind of it, it's it's talking about obviously a, a subject that the subscribers really want to know about. You know, more board games and games in general. So uh, it certainly you know piqued my interest. Well, I might be uh, borrowing a copy off someone who else is already subscribed. Well, <laughs> yes, I'll say I, I may have sub- I, I may have subscribed after after you told me about it earlier this week, sir. So. I'll say yeah. three three copies a year. I, I well, can't remember the last time I've seen a magazine, to be honest. But this is actually looks quite tempting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it does for me Luck, as well. Luckily, in these the get delivered world, to your house. Quite... I don't I don't have to go to my local news agents and okay. pick it up. Uh, they get delivered straight to my door. Oh, that's good. Perfect. And, and uh, what was the price of subscription? If I don't mind asking again, I know you did mention it. They are seven quid an issue. I think I bought. You can do a thing where you get like you can buy the next three issues. Um, so I did a subscription where I've got this one and whatever the subsequent two editions are going to be. Um, and I think there I, there might have been a slight discount on that. I think it might have been £20 for three. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a fairly reasonable price um, yeah. for a, a decent quality publication. Yeah, I would say when I did my subscription the other night, it was uh, £21 for the three issues over the year. But by doing the three issues, they... Forgo the shipping costs if you're in the UK. Uh, that's what I'm thinking of, yeah. Oh, which was normally yeah. about two quid. Yeah. Cost, so, which well, over the cost of the year is still nothing. <laughs> well, I feel very lucky because my other half, Blesser, has just piped up in the background saying she's going to get it for me. So uh, get oh. in. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, if there's anyone out there in internet land that's also watching live at this moment in time, if you've got it, say hi, speak up. Uh, we are live. Uh, as George has pointed out, George is running tonight, but I'm moderating. So, and if you like reading stuff about board games, I hear there's a very successful website attached to this show. Yes, there is. Oh, www.doalg.co.uk. Really? Always be <laughs> plugging. Yeah, <laughs> Amazing. amazingly smooth transition there. Well done. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's yes. got to be done. <laughs> yes, and of course. Uh, no, Becca can tell us all, all about Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective now. I can now indeed. Now then, being one of, having written such a wonderful article for the site for recently. Oh, thank you. Um, so Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective uh, Thames Murders uh, is a game that I received for Christmas from my parents-in-law. Um, and I quite like a sort of a mystery... Um, a bit of freeform gameplay. If you've ever done any of the um, escape rooms in a box kind of thing, it's kind of got a similar vibe. Um, it's also got that sort of Cluedo thing going on because it's a murder and Cluedo's like the only murder game. Mm. Um, <laughs> well, the only one that I've played anyway. Um, so it was originally published in 1982. Uh, so it's a bit older than probably most of the games uh, that we talk about on this show. Wow. However, it's it's been re-released several times. So I've got a fairly nice shiny new version of it such as the one that you can see pictured on the right there mm. um so it's i think it's been through several publishers as well so it's with space cowboy at the moment um it's one to eight players it takes about as long as you want it to uh, i think we sat down to play it for probably an hour and a half two hours but you could probably get through it a bit quicker um and you play as uh, a group of people, or you can you can play it single player as well. But you play as the Baker Street Irregulars, uh, and you're trying to essentially beat Sherlock's score at solving uh, a, a criminal case. So you get given a directory, like it looks like a sort of phone directory, except it doesn't have phone numbers in it. It's got sort of reference uh, map references for different locations and people. Uh, you get given a newspaper for the day on which the the investigation is taking place for whichever case it is that you're looking at uh, and you basically have to piece together your introductory story to the case um, and any clues that you grab to find people and places to visit to get more clues to uncover who is responsible for the crime uh, as i say it's pretty free form there's only a couple of rules so you you know they recommend writing things down on paper and tracking it and it can get quite intense i use probably six sheets of, of paper um, just tracking everything that everyone was saying um, and it was it was quite a fun little experience um, I have only played one case out of the 10 that the game comes supplied with um, but 
what I, I really liked that it's got quite a rich and detailed story, you know, lots of little tidbits in there. Um, as I mentioned, it's got the, the sort of escape room kind of vibe. Hmm. Um, I, I like that it doesn't have many instructions and rules because I don't mind reading a rule book. But, you know, when you sit there and read like a tome of rules, it's just yeah, when you, when you just want to go and play. Well, that's George's hobby. So you've lost him there. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. There are tomes there. They're called the newspapers. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, I like the fact that you can do that. You can so the the opening to the case, the prologue, if you will, is about three pages long, yeah. and then it's just kind of like go, and you've got the newspaper and the directory and whatever notes you've made, and you just sort of go, and it's up to you what what threads of a case that you want to pull on. Um, but you can, as we did, sit there and read the whole newspaper for a bit if that's your sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. I think because we've only done Does... the first case. I think you get every it's not just the newspaper for the current case but the newspaper for that day and any days before it yeah. so it's possible that all the news the newspapers might contain clues for other cases as well yeah I don't know I think that is the case um but yeah it's all the dialogue and, and text and everything is is well written there's no overly gaping plot holes that we could see at least from the first case um there are a couple of things I wasn't so fond of um so the, the scoring at the beginning is really unclear uh, it doesn't really tell you how you're going to be marked and graded uh, at all. So you're not really sure what you should be doing to try and maximise your score. So if you are a play to win kind of person, uh, I'd recommend maybe talking to somebody that's played it. I think uh, I don't think it would spoil anything to say that the way that it's scored is it's based on how many places, how many places you've visited uh, up to you going to back to Baker Street and declaring that you've solved the case and answering questions at the end to Sherlock. Um, I, the, the fewer places you had to visit, the better your score is. So, yeah, is you, correct? Get, you get negative points for every place that you visited that Sherlock didn't, basically. Or it's, it's based on number, not exact yeah. location. So if Sherlock had visited six places to solve the case and you visited ten, you would accrue minus points for the four locations that you visited that weren't. Yeah, that were ex that were additional to so, um, so, there's, so there's no fail state really. It's just kind of a rolling score from what from yeah, I mean, mission to mission that kind of thing. One, of, crime one of the other points that I was going to bring up is that although the the rulebook recommends that you track everything, you actually have to um, for the scoring because you need to track every location that you visit. Mm -hmm. And actually, if we had tracked every location and encounter that we'd had, we probably would have ended up on minus points because yeah. we really wanted to get in there and explore all the text and try and figure mm. it out and hear everything that everyone had to say, um, which is an experience that you will miss out on if you're trying to get like the maximum score. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a perverse idea for a game that it will, it's a game that wants you to explore as little of the game as possible. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. However, it, it, it gives you some nice replay. That replay is. that you can try it once to try and beat the game initially and then explore the edges afterwards. Yeah, you could definitely do that, I think. Um, there is sort of the risk of spoiling stuff as mm. you're playing as well. So you have your um, your guidebook for this case, which is where you, when you grab the references from the directory, you look them up in this book and it will tell you... There'll be a little um, story for each location. Yeah, mm. uh, but you could very easily accidentally see stories for other locations without actually visiting them. So you have to be quite careful if you're trying not to spoil it for yourself. And I don't know why you would spoil it for yourself because it's literally a narrative game. Like, why would yeah. you do it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's um, the point of the game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was going to ask than... the replay value, but I guess once you've done one case, you know who's done it, so... Um... Yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, there is there is fun to be had with the different player interactions. So the way that it's it's supposed to be played is that you each take it in turns to decide where you're going to visit and somebody will read it from the book. And um, But I think it, we kind of ended up playing it as almost like, yeah, like yeah. a committee. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, where should we go next? Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is, it is a nice little game. There's a few things in there that are, they're niggly, but they, they don't ruin the fun. Okay. Like if, if you're into this sort of game, um, I would I would recommend it. Mm. Good to know. Like I say, the production looks amazing. I'm trying yeah, to like, read good. the newspapers now. I mean, I could just read the whole thing there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, looks, yeah. it looks really good. Um, yeah, the newspapers are they are quite cool. They're not like newspaper quality paper because that wouldn't yeah. have much longevity and <laughs> yeah. of course. <laughs> uh, but the you know the print and the layout is is absolutely fine. It 
is convincingly akin to a newspaper of the 1890s, which I believe is when uh, when this game is based. Um, but yeah, I would I would recommend if you like if you like a mystery, if you like to just sort of sit down and have a think for a couple of hours cooperatively. Yeah, or if you play it really well, have a think for about twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the only thing I've, I say I've seen this bef before, and I've heard a few few negative comments that uh, basically the Sherlock is apparently apparently psychic and has <laughs> some magical abilities to make connections that aren't physically there. Yeah, Would there's you... this whole this whole thing about a cigarette holder that I'm not even going to go into now. But if you want to hear me rant about it, we will. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's a it's a fun game to not play very well. Like, yeah. if, if we'd have, if we'd have been good at it, I think I would have enjoyed it less. But yeah, yeah. Uh, if the, the enjoyment is about actually, the exploration uh, of it. We yeah. did actually end up getting it wrong at the end as well. So. Uh, Good, good on us. I bet Sherlock wasn't impressed with that. <laughs> he was not. <laughs> but, I think Sherlock scores a base 100 points every round. Uh, yeah. And we, before we even took any minus points, we were on like 60. Yeah. And so. <laughs> in the artwork, does he look like um, Benadryl, Benadryl Cabbage Patch or whatever his name is? Or, you know. Benadryl Benadryl. You know, yeah, I don't not actually remember. If oh. if, I don't think there is so much, there if is. any, of Sherlock. No, it's very text-based. Uh, so okay. perhaps not suitable if you're like, uh, you know, English second language or or you have mm. problems reading things, that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, otherwise, all good. Give it a go. Oh. Yeah, fantastic. I like, the look of, I like the look of that. Yeah. I look forward to getting a, getting a review on that. But, uh, yeah. Did you hear you saying 1982? 1982, yeah. My God, it's almost as old as me. I was born it's older in than me. <laughs> I'm 92. It's 10 That's years. Nuts. 10 years before my time. Anyway, we digress. Say, it's sorry. always good to see some, some games that have longevity yeah. to them. Yeah, fantastic. So yes, time. So from from the old dark, dark ages to the uh, brand new ages of digital gaming with Mr. Leakey. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, yeah, I've been uh, checking out uh, digital versions of my favourite games and games I've never had a chance to play in real life. Uh, so that's one good thing from this lockdown. <laughs> I mean, there's a huge list of games I've never ever seen and I managed to actually uh, play in some form, which is better than nothing. And uh, the one I'm looking at uh, recently is Game of Thrones, the board game, which I've been playing on Steam, but I'm sure it's available on all the devices too. I'm not sponsored by Steam. Just want to point that out. <laughs> no, we're, we're not sponsored, but if Steam <laughs> want to sponsor us, then they're oh, Yeah, if you want to give us some money, they're more than welcome to. Yeah, that'll be fine. Um, yeah, so basically it's a huge game, so I won't go into all of the rules. Uh, but in a nutshell, it's an area control game. Uh, it's kind of okay. like uh, Risk. Oh. Spoilers, go back. Uh, it's like Risk uh, in a way, but with loads of extra bells and whistles, which kind of add to the Game of Thrones theme. It's uh, it's based on the book, not the show. So there's loads of characters from the, the book series, not the TV show. Uh, I've got my own problems with the TV show, but that's for an entirely different kind of a uh, rant. <laughs> so I won't go into that now. Um, I feel it's, like there's uh, another show coming on called The Rant. Yeah, I, I, I could have an, hour, an hour's rant about that, so I'm going to try and yeah. avoid that topic. Um, but yeah, so basically, similar to Risk, but it's a bit different because it's a game where you can't literally win just by having the biggest army uh, because in a way it's actually a bit of a liability because it's a bit more realistic. You have to actually feed the army. Uh, oh, right. For example, you need to okay. control, you need to have supplies to feed them. And if there's one faction one player that's got a massive army it's actually more of a liability because you have to carefully not have too many troops in one place otherwise they could like abandon you they disband if you can't feed them that kind of thing and you can actually raid other players lands to steal their food and then they have, if, if a certain cards arrive people's armies could just fall apart if they haven't got the supply to feed them which i think is quite a nice touch um the the, the main aspect of the game though really is it's uh, kind of the diplomacy uh, like lots of fragile alliances going on. Um, it's really difficult to have wars on multiple fronts. So you mm. are really encouraged to uh, kind of have alliances with your teammates or neighbours. So uh, I remember playing the real board game version with you, yeah. Dan. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, <laughs> how close is it to the actual game itself? Oh, yeah, it's very close. Yeah, in terms of a digital adaptation, it's, um, it's very impressive. 
Uh, in fact, it's actually easier to play than the real life version because one of my problems with the real life version is there's um, there is balance issues if you don't have six people, exactly six people. It's because if you play with one of the southern factions, for the nerds out there, that would be the Baratheons or the Lannisters, that kind of thing. Um, if, you, if you've got less than six players, the bottom half of the map is kind of empty or it's got like neutral tokens, which are really easy to take over. So the, the southern players can just move south and just ignore everyone else on the board and they can just kind of win the yeah. game without really Anyone fighting. Anyone who starts at King's Landing, basically. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we, in the, with the physical version, we used to house rule it so you, can not, you can't move south if you're on the bottom of the board, you know, if you're one of the southern factions. Yeah. Um, yeah, we did. <laughs> but in the in the game in the um, Steam game, that's not an issue because if the players missing, you can fill them with AI, and the um, yeah. the, the AI is actually pretty competent. Um, it's, it's it's actually quite impressive. There's it a does... few people out there on Internet Land Dan that uh, oh. have also played. Uh, oh great! We've got Pete online who he says he's actually played it with you. Yeah, in the flesh. <laughs> yeah, I, to I totally betrayed him. Sorry, Pete. This <laughs> <laughs> seems to be a running pattern. <laughs> <laughs> the games yeah. play. Um, yeah, it's it's a fun game. It's uh, the theme is spot on with the fragile alliances things because to win the game you need seven castles, but there's only a limited amount of castles on the island. Um, so you can be friends with someone for the entire game, but then if they ever if you only need like one more castle to win, and you see their flank is kind of a bit exposed because you've been at peace with them the entire game, mm -hmm. it's so tempting just to backstab them, steal the castle, and get the win. It's brilliant. And uh, there's another. Yeah, that, that isn't a habit of you in, you in games. I, I don't remember a Draco suddenly uh, pouncing all over the plants. So and I'll also, Pete Drake. has piped up and he says oh, he God. believes he betrayed you, Dan. Oh, it goes both ways, I'm sure. <laughs> it does. We're, this is one of these games where you so have these kind of mechanics. Everyone betrays each other. Yeah, no you can't take it personally. It's, it's all the game. Yeah, alliances forever. <laughs> it's for the fun. It's for the fun of the game. Yeah. Um, I, I could run about this game for ages. In terms of uh, digital ad adaptation, it's um, one of the best I've seen. It's by Asmodee Game Digital. I might be yeah. pronouncing that wrong. Asmodee, and then they, made, yeah. they made loads of great other ones like uh, Terraforming Mars, which is great as well. Love Letter. Yeah, they've got really good digital ad adaptations. Yeah. I mean, I haven't found any bugs with this game, which is quite impressive because I always seem to find bugs with all the ones. I haven't found any issues. Um, the cosmetic, it looks great. It's good animation. Uh, there's, the soundtrack is pretty good as well. I don't know if it's the official Game of Thrones soundtrack or anything, but it's, it fits the theme. Um, mm. And like I said, it's actually easier to play than in the flesh. <laughs> just because, um, say you've only got three people, don't sweat it. Just fill up the other spaces with AI if you want to. It's pretty good. Have you been beaten by the AI yet? I have, yeah. yeah. It's kind of, <laughs> I've, got, I've got kind of a 50-50 uh, win ratio. The only criticism I've got is the AI does seem to pick on me a bit, and I don't know if that's just me being paranoid. <laughs> yeah, <you're> paranoid Dan. <laughs> Even if I'm clearly not a threat to them, they'll just curb stomp me while there's uh, clearly another AI that's running away with the game. Sometimes. Is it a um, Gandhi type problem? It could be a Gandhi thing, yeah. But I'll say, why would you pick on the person who's going to fight back? Exactly, just curb stomp them, the person that's no threat <laughs> yeah. at all. Um, it, that, there, there can sometimes be one night like, AI that's almost on the verge of winning the game and if it was real life people would kind of gang up on the leader to try and stop them winning the yeah. AI doesn't seem to do that, they seem to not worry about that they just seem to like kick in the <laughs> down instead they play their game and stick to it whether it's um, winning yeah. or losing they, they, they know who the real enemy is yeah, yeah they, exactly <laughs> well I'm going to stand bags. up for Pete here and I'm going to oh, he's, he's, he's come on up and said uh, I think we had one turn where we both planned to attack one another and I moved first <laughs> who betrayed each other first it's great so, he, so he, he's taken one and admitted that he moved first <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's a long time ago. There's been so many betrayals, Pete. I'm sure it wasn't that way, your... Pete. You know, we know Dan much better. <laughs> no, yeah. we probably don't. <laughs> no, I was going to say, it's arguing who's the biggest toaster. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we'll move on. We'll move on. Uh, yeah, in a nutshell, it's a great game. I would recommend keeping an eye out for it. It's in sale. Um, it's one of the best digital adaptations I've seen. It's quite a long game, though. So be prepared to spend a couple hours playing it. Yeah. I think you can save your game though, so I don't know if you can multiplayer. I haven't tried that yet, but yeah. I have a I have a really quick question. What's the combat like? Because in theory, I like games that are like Risk, but in practice, mm -hmm. I hate Risk. There's no <laughs> dice. There's, there's no dice in this. Um, basically, you've got three types of troops. 
and they're worth a different strength each. So you've got like footmen, which are worth one point, or knights are worth two, and oh, okay. like siege engines, which are good against castles, but rubbish against everything else, that kind of thing. Okay. Cool. Uh, and, and you just um, you pile them together, and then you can play a card, uh, which is the characters from the show, and they've all got their own strength and extra okay. abilities. And then you just add up and the highest wins, or if there's yeah. a tie, the highest on a certain kind of ranking wins, depending on who's got like the best combat sure. stats, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So a bit more tactical in that way, in that you there are fixed numbers yeah. in place. So. Yeah, there's there's uh you can add an extra module which adds an element of luck. It chucks a random number to both of your sides. So even if you've got like a really inferior force, you might still win. But that's optional. By default, okay. you've just got cards and the people on the, the table, so you, there's no dice. So you can decide if it's winning or losing battle and act accordingly, which I quite like as well. <laughs> cool. Well, Pete's made a, a funny comment. He oh, said it's among us. Who we fall Pete? among us? It's among us. That, yeah, in a way, yeah. Well, yeah. For any yeah. fans of Among Us out there, or, or anyone who doesn't know what Among Us is, is a digital uh, co-op <laughs> game with with hidden agenda mechanics. It's, it's another destroyer of friendships. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure most of the people on this call murdered me last weekend at some point so yeah we were playing hey, hey, don't put one min in that bucket he wasn't involved I, bless him I, I say, I say, he's, he's the innocent bystander <laughs> the rest of you i probably would have if i if i were playing yeah he <laughs> probably would have, yeah. <laughs> we might but have to arrange a game for you <laughs> my survival rate was not good <laughs> cool anyway that's uh game of thrones awesome it is so mr chris do you want to tell us about your latest latest acquisition well, it's not really my acquisition. I just wanted to talk about it because, believe it or not, it's actually a present my wife got because it's one of her favourite games that we've got and we like playing. Um, yeah, we've even uh, played this uh, online uh, over the internet with Zoom with some friends, i.e. George and Sui, uh, and it plays really well. So, of course, when Kat got this at Christmas on Christmas Day from some very good friends of ours, um, they, you know, the, the expansion, you know, it really kind of just went down really well. Um, the the new expansion is actually quite, quite some interesting elements that um, uh, it brings in. One, it brings in a new character, so you actually can now play with Ginny Weasley. Yeah, um, it's also got a, a, a enhanced mechanics that brings in new villains uh, such as Pansy Parkinson and Marcus Flint and even have uh, encounters, as additional encounters as well. So um, it, it just brings in uh, nice new elements that you know you probably haven't seen in any previous expansions. Um, what the, one of the things I like about this game is the fact that it has an element of a deck builder game because with each year when you play, um, it brings in uh, different elements and your deck resets. So you don't end up running away with the game uh, as you build up a, a, a deck builder, as you would with a traditional kind of deck building game. You get you, you if you might complete that year and defeat all the villains and overcome all the dark arts elements. Uh, you will then reset because you've gone away, you've gone home, you know, you've gone on summer break, and then you come back for the new year. You've forgotten everything you've learned, and you've <laughs> got to relearn it all. It's great. So uh, I like I like the you know I like that element because sometimes with like if anyone else is on the on the on the show or anyone who's watched uh, has played deck building games later on towards the game once you've refined that deck you know you can often you know just run away with it and easily complete agendas or or, or you know elements of a game. But this I quite keeps like going. that aspect if I'm yeah. the one that's winning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, it, particularly when it resets, um, it just gives that element of challenge. And I tell you what, the game is not forgiving. No. You know, considering it's a cooperative game and you play against the board and, and the Dark Hearts events and the villains, uh, through each year, it just gets harder. For example, you'll, you might end up with um, multiple Dark Hearts events because you've, you've not been able to keep control of your location in the game. Because one of the elements is, uh, you have locations, and then uh, if you don't quite keep control of your dark art events, they'll spill over, and then you end up drawing more cards during the dark dark arts phase, and it is unforgiving. Like, yeah, exactly. Like my my wife has just popped up in the background. We've only completed the game twice. That's going from one years one to seven. 
you can do it in one great big sitting, what's really good about it. Um, but you can also do it in, uh, you know, break it down in years. You could do a year in evening and continue to play. Uh, how, how long does each year last in terms of game length? Uh, each year can last up to, you know, hour well, and depends on, yeah, depends on the year. Max, I would say maximum maybe an hour and a half. Yeah, so okay. Yeah. And then it gets to about an hour. Yeah, gets to about to an hour towards the later years, but early I game. Don't know how many villains mm-hmm. Yeah, half an hour, depending on how many villains oh, there really? are. Okay. But if you've got three villains out, the combination of villains can be really unforgiving. Yeah, so I've played get- games of it where you have, where if you get a nice early setup and you build your deck and it, you just blitz through it. Yeah. And then other, other games where before you know what's happening, you're in year, year three and you're constantly firefighting just yeah. to stay in the game and you can never, and you, you never build the deck. Yeah. I mean, um, Paul makes, yeah, we got uh, Paul Swift online at the moment watching the show. Hi, Paul. Uh, he makes cool. a valid point because Ginny allows you to have an extra player. So it's not just an additional player character. You can now have up to five players playing at the same time. Is, is Ginny available for all the years then? The expansion? Does it give like all yes. the different versions yeah. of it? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So it's awesome. not just, that's just the great thing with it. You can take elements of the different expansions and, and, and play with them. You don't have to play with all of it. It's your choice and your discretion, but it's in your benefit to you play with all the relevant elements from the relevant expansion you're playing with because the different cards tend to have in that expansion stuff to overcome those villains. Oh, yeah, so um, my wife's favourite character is Ron, uh, and I must admit, I think Harry's quite, ability is very good for removing dark marks, so I quite like Harry. But we like to make it difficult for ourselves and we randomise who we get characters-wise. Or you just, you know, you end up playing with the same characters all the time. What happens if you lose in a year? Do your characters die? Or yeah. right. So what happens is your characters um, lose all their lose. If they lose all their lives, they become stunned. Um, so you don't actually die per se, but the game just gets harder when you get stunned. You add a dark mark to the to the to the current location you're on, and then sooner the lo- the, the locations get corrupted, you then lose. So uh, in, in each one, there tends to be three locations. If you corrupt all three locations by getting stunned multiple times, that's it, game over, and you've lost. Mm. That's it. You just like yeah. start that year over again if you lose yeah. that year, or okay. Well, that, that depends on whether, whether you're playing on the hard legacy version or not. Yeah, <laughs> if you're playing I'm hard not. mode, you go back to year one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not playing hard mode. No. no. <laughs> the majority, the majority That's worse than people... Magic Legacy you suggested the other week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. worse than Magic Legacy. Yeah. I mean, oh. the, the base game kind of gets you up to year three uh, and gets you used to the mechanics. And then if you wanted to, uh, if you're just coming in after playing it and having played it before, because it's got a good replayability, uh, you can just start from year three. You've been playing it for a year now and never had the same conversation. Yeah, we yeah we've been. I don't know whether you heard that, but my wife said uh, we've been playing for a year uh, and we've not had the same combinations. So uh, it's, it it play, replays very well, and this new expansion just just adds a whole new element uh, to it. I mean, it's not light on the expansion. You get 158 cards, you get uh, four game packs, you get a new chair player board, as well as all of all the influence and charm tokens and relevant rules updates to get with it. I actually think that the game designers, US Opoly, have done a very good ver- job of this. There's been lots of different Harry Potter type themed games, uh, and this one's really stood time well. Um, other, these other Harry Potter kind of games have kind of gone um, uh, and not really hung around that much. Uh, but for one like this to get expansions is always a good thing. Yeah, I mean, I love tiny little features in the theme, just like the, the symbols on spells actually sh- show the wand movements for, for the spell. Yeah, the subtle little details are great. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's definitely one to check out if you haven't played it. I mean, I know we've got a lot of watchers and a lot of followers who have watched it, uh, watched it and played it. Uh, so uh, it definitely sounds like it's a popular one out there. So if you, if you haven't and you're re-watching or if you're online and you haven't played it, do let us know. Uh, but I'll let I've, us move on. I've never played it, but I might need to borrow your version, Chris, once the, once the world's back to normal. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you borrow my we might, yeah, it's not my copy. You've got to remember it's Cat's copy. Oh, it's Cat's copy. Let you borrow it. 
yeah. But I'd Or we're like just boring you for the day. Yeah. <laughs> or we can just do it online over Zoom because, like I said, it does play to you doing it. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah, it worked well when we did it the other night. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> I say, and from one co op game to another. So I, I'll say, I believe it's from the same set of uh, very close friends, as Chris. Uh, my, uh, I say mine, our Christmas present for Sui and I. Uh, from them this year was Subterra, uh, which is a really neat little uh, co-op game by Inside the Box uh, Applications. And basically you are a bunch of cavers who have been trapped in a ca cave and you've got to uh, escape before the horrors get you uh, and your flashlights run out. Um, I really love the game. Uh, I think there's a few. I think the production's been really well thought through. There's lots of unique abilities. So there's eight different uh, cavers that you can choose from, all with really interesting, unique abilities. Um, I would say for me, some of them are perhaps a bit more useful than others. <laughs> but I think some, I would agree. Some of the balance on the, them doesn't quite sit right. Um, Little things slightly bug me, but I also understand the reason for them that it has it is very dark, and sometimes uh, when you're looking at tiles and trying to figure out where entrances and exits are to cards, by the time you've got a, got a more pawn on there, you sometimes can't really see where everything is very easily. But there are lots of little features that I absolutely love about this, which I didn't even realise until I was looking at some strategy guides online. Um, that they actually do, uh, it's got UV paint on it. So if you have a UV light, that it actually shines up and glows blue, blue which just adds to the theme greatly. Uh, and I so say, I think it's very easy to play, very simple. I would happily play it with anyone. I think the only issue for me is the, um, sorry, my camera's just died. Um, so the only real issue for me... You've been lost in the darkness now, George. It's quite ironic. <laughs> He's <laughs> gone into some terror. You, you, My flashlight has, ju has just died. You're, you're like doing method acting for the game. Brilliant touch. <laughs> indeed, indeed. I should, I, I should have chopped someone's head off for the Game of Thrones one. I didn't know we were doing this. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yes. Yeah. So there, there is a sequel. It's... Pre it's on pre-order at the moment. There is a Subterra 2 coming out if it hasn't already, I think, as well. Uh, okay. I remember them advertising it. It it's, is, I believe, out now, if I recall. Oh, there we go. What's the award there it's won? I can see it's... Uh... UK Games Expo, Game of the Year 2017, I think. It wow. Was, yeah. that's, that's not a, a light award, so... No, it's I'm... not. I, I think it's a really good game. I say, I think the... When the difficulty really is awful the first time you play it, <laughs> I I've, we picked it up and on the easiest difficulty we got annihilated for about the first four or five times until you start action, which was why I had to look at strategy guides online because I was just like, how the heck do you even win this game? Mm. And I thought that they'd really broken the balance. And it's when you start playing it with the right combination of characters and you realise there are some heroes in there that you really can't do without at times. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. At least that was my experience of it. I, I have feelings about Subterra and they're mostly, uh, they're mostly not good, actually. <laughs> oh, go on, go, go, um, go, 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 digress. <laughs> It's, I mean, it's okay. It's, it's kind of fine. I mean, I have more general feelings about ITB that I'm not going to go into, but um, <laughs> my, uh, so a friend of mine got Subterra um, and we played it, a f played it a few times. I've played it a handful of times now. Um, and I keep coming up against the same bug, like with the, with the game system, which is that you're supposed to, uh, prior to laying a tile, I hope that I'm right here because otherwise I'm just going to sound like an idiot. You're supposed to declare where you're going to place that tile before you draw it. Yeah. Um, and every single time I play, I draw an illegal tile at some point in the game, uh, which and you can't put it at the bottom because one of the mechanics of the game is that you have two piles of uh, um, tiles and one of the two piles has the exit tile at the bottom or within the last three tiles, I think, of the pile. 
Um, so I uh, they, might have, they might have tweaked the, ru the rules in that the version I've got, they it's one stack of tiles, but the exit is always in the bottom six. Okay. And okay. I think they have also said now that it's not an illegal placement. It is deliberately you've run into a dead end because okay. um, that it allows sort of false walls. Yeah, the version that my friend's got is the initial Kickstarter version. Uh, mm. So I imagine that's probably where that's come from. Yeah, um, good old erratas. <laughs> my, my other, it's not really a problem, but I just, I really wish that the horrors, um, again, this may be different in your version, but I really wish that the horrors weren't just purple cylinders. No, They're again, not very that, scary. They, are just, they are just that. Uh, one of the Kickstarter bonuses was actual uh, uh, resin miniatures. But yeah, yeah. Even then, they, they basically look like hellhounds and it's really yeah. like, it's not really a horror. I mean, I, I quite like the little um, the little meeples. Like they're they're fine, and I really mm. like the the character design of the the sort of player um, card things where you put all your your bits. But I just I don't know the purple cylinders. Like they don't even really fit with the color scheme. It just I just don't like them. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't feel like I'm under pursuit when I'm <laughs> when I'm playing. No, this game. And, I think the purple once, cylinders. and certainly <laughs> once often. once you get into the strategy of it, they really are the, the most unscary things ever. Yeah, you can kind of <laughs> trap them because they always go for the for the nearest person. Uh, so you can kind of just bait them while everyone else is doing their thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, so, it's an okay game. Interesting perspective. Um, I mean, I always like a bit of disagreement. It's, it's yeah. what this throw, you know, the show yeah, thrives on. We don't but, need to uh, like everything, do we? No, exactly. I mean, <laughs> Paul Swift mentions that, that board game, uh, another board game site uh, that I'm not going to mention because this is our show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> says gives it a good rating. Uh, but, you know, do check it out. Uh, and uh, if you, you want to uh, hear our thoughts on it in a more deeper depth, then... Um, have a good look at the review. I believe it. There's, there's a review on the site now, isn't there, George? Uh, not yet for this this one. It's uh, still pen, pending me actually doing another playthrough to take picture, pictures. Yeah. So it will be up soon. Yeah. So watch this space, guys, because we'll have the official review on there, and uh, we'll let Rebecca have a perspective as well. <laughs> I hope I didn't bring the tone down. I just thought it was high time no, that I good. disagreed no, no, with no, something. Paul, 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 no, Paul really put you in place by telling you game. that everyone else disagrees with you. There's well, something wrong with the this. majority right. of people. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, it's, it's, high it. time, it's high time that I actually disagree or dislike something. Uh, yeah. It's been seven episodes. You no, know, you can't <laughs> like everything. You know. To be honest, I was exactly where you were until I realised that there were a lot more ways to play it than we would yeah. have discovered. I mean, I, yeah, you, you were approaching it as a strategy game rather than a horror yeah. type game. Yeah. I, I don't own the game, so I've, I've only played it probably five or six times. Um, mm. So I've not, I certainly haven't put in the hours or given it as much uh, time as you much have. Much thought, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, we like, we like it and uh, we thrive on it. And one thing we pride ourselves, and I will mention this, I've mentioned it probably before, we pride ourselves on honest reviews, guys. So uh, it's what uh, DOALG is based on. So uh, if you like honesty and you know don't want people buying a good review, then uh, you know this is the place for you. It is indeed. But anyway, enough of us rabbiting. I say I think it's time we hear from our special guest, Wanmin, to tell Ooh. us all Yay. about his new new game, Sisyphus Corp. I think. No. Feel free to correct me if I've completely butchered the pronunciation of that. I mean, it's pretty good, yeah. Uh, it's it's technically pronounced uh, Sisyphus, uh, named after the Greek myth. I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, the guy who was punished by some guy to push a boulder up a cliff for the rest oh, cool. of his yeah. life. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that guy. Yeah, cool. Nice. So, so it's again, it... that one apparently. <laughs> <laughs> she likes her Greek mythology. So this game is. Uh, I don't know how to how to say. Uh, kind of like a love child, like uh, close, near and dear to my heart. I don't know if the theme necessarily resonates with a lot of the people out there, but I used to work for a large company and I hated every second of it. You know, working for a giant <laughs> giant corporation, being like another gear in the cog, uh, another cog in the machine, so to speak. So I don't this think game... anyone can resonate with that at all. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what you're talking about. We're not all office drones. What you're <laughs> No, we're not office drones at all. 
So in this game, you're an employee working as a, in a giant corporation um, to be the first one promoted. Uh, you have the goal is to go around the office and kiss up, uh, suck up to all of the bosses, and then make it back to the uh, performance review for your promotion. So it's a race, a rat race, basically, uh, in a in a board game form, um, and it's a very cutthroat type of game. Uh, kind of take that. Uh, type of game where you know you're constantly at each other's throats, uh, utilizing various office politics cards to you know further your own career or to put others down. You know, swap locations, prevent people from doing that. You know, making people uh, stuck on various projects, stuff like that. Yeah, a bit close to the truth there. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the theme. I think it's interesting. Um, I, I actually haven't ever worked for like a big corporation, uh, but you see you see it like, you know, in movies and stuff and yeah. everyone's just like, you know, they they would step over the they would step <laughs> over the corpse of their colleague to get like, you know, to <laughs> exactly. get the boss to acknowledge that they exist. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely. I love the theme of this. Yeah. Uh, and, and we're very excited to get our hands on this. Um, because um, one min is going to be uh, providing us with a copy uh, yeah, so soon. we can get a good review, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, <laughs> and give you our thoughts and feelings on this. But I, I, I've been looking at this since day one. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and I mean, I say I've read the rule book. I, yeah, I'm a law's lawyer. That's, I, I do it as a hobby. And I say I'm really looking forward to this. It definitely looks my, like my sort sorts of game and I can't wait to get my grubby little mints on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to have a fight for over the actual board game here, uh, one min. Oh yeah, the, the last time we how had does that, this how does that was, work? <laughs> yeah, well, last time we had this, it was uh, Midnight Pig. Yeah, I won last time. <laughs> yeah, you won last time. <laughs> I may not win this so. time. I will concede. <laughs> I can uh, I can try it out on uh, on Tabletop Simulator, maybe. Yeah, definitely. Yes, yes. indeed. Yes. Oh yeah. Um, um, so, um, what was your? So, what was kind? Come on. Yeah, I want to know your insights now uh, of your feelings on doing your first Kickstarter. Um, my feelings are mostly, you know, fear, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of anxiety. You know, not knowing what's going on. Um, kind of learning as I go. You know, I've never made a board game before, let alone try to sell it to the world. You know. Yeah. Uh, so I started making this maybe I want to say like two years ago now. You know, I was just sitting in the in my parents' basement uh, with a pen and paper, just thinking of you know all of the different board games that I like, writing down all the various mechanics that I like, you know, trying to mash them together into some weird Frankenstein of a of a game. And obviously that was terrible, and it was it wasn't fun at all. But so eventually. Yeah, go ahead. So you set out to just make a game. You didn't have like, you didn't have the concept. You're just like, right, I want to make a game. Right. So I wanted to make a game and, you know, I threw together a bunch of mechanics, but the theme definitely didn't come until way later. But I knew that in my mind that I wanted to make some sort of game that, you know, made fun of like corporate America or like the whole <laughs> corporate <laughs> type of thing. Yeah. So you so. said that like you were thinking about other games that you that you enjoyed and mechanics that you enjoyed. Mm -hmm. So what other games kind of inspired uh, Sisyphus Corp? Well, at the time I was really really into Dominion. Um, okay. But I don't know if there's any many aspects of Dominion that are you know prevalent in this game. Um, some Dominion. Uh, there's like a little bit of aspects from like Magic. But I don't have too much experience with magic as well. Okay. And then it's really hard to say because the game, the mechanics change so much over time. You know, I've played this yeah. with over like 200 different people so far. And it's it changes every time. So Yeah, I saw on your blog yeah. about some of the um some of the rules to do with the I can't remember the name of the cards, but the cards and you made like the little plastic um, yeah, yeah. board and you were putting them in there and like you kept changing and refining mm -hmm. the way that it works mm -hmm. until it was a completely different thing. Yeah, totally did, different. Did I hear you had an interesting approach to uh, getting some play testers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I had a, so after, you know, exhausting my list of, you know, friends who yeah. were uh, <laughs> <laughs> willing to play test this for like the billionth time, um, I needed to find some people who, you know, don't know me and would 
wouldn't necessarily be afraid to give, you know, honest feedback. Um, so I reached out, I uh, came up with this idea of uh, creating a Tinder account. This was back before I met my girlfriend at the time. Uh, <laughs> She wouldn't, she wouldn't be approve of such a thing. <laughs> uh, so I created a Tinder account and I try to bait people into giving me, you know, free uh, play testing sessions by offering, you know, free pizza. You know, who doesn't <laughs> like free pizza and free games, you know? Yeah, you would have that's had, amazing. you know. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, you would have put several takers here in the UK. I can tell you that now. Nice. Yeah, so that, that's what I did, you know. And uh, after, after a while, you know, a few people... You know, matched with me and they, you know, they seemed interested, but they never really like followed through. So I don't know, typical Tinder fashion, you know, getting ghosted. <laughs> and, uh, ghosted after after a game. Exactly. Oh, and wow. free pizza. Like, I, I know. What, what, what the more pizza did, sold it. <laughs> oh, did they need? in lockdown, I'd be there now. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it does involve a transatlantic flight. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you know, New York pizza, like, what, what more do you need? Oh, New York pizza is my dream. <laughs> it's one like of my the big floppy slices. Pizza. <laughs> so yeah, after a while, I finally met someone uh, who, you know, agreed to meet up, who also happened to be a, another board game designer. And, on Tinder? Uh, on Tinder, yes. yes oh, wow. On Tinder, it's like yeah. a hidden meetup for... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a dark design. underground network of uh, board game designers on Tinder. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, I love it. So we met up, uh, we played the game. She gave me a lot of great feedback and she pointed me in the direction of another game conference that's uh, called Metatopia, specifically for other designers. And I met up with a whole bunch of people there and, you know, ended up revamping my entire game from the ground up and led me down the path to what it is currently. Wow. The million dollar question is, did you buy pizza for that person? I did. Oh, oh, you're, you're a good, good guy. Lad. I think actually it, it ended up not being pizza. It might have been coffee instead. Uh, okay. Because we, oh. we ended up meeting at a Panera Bread, I think. Coffee yeah. is just as good. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, it's great. Uh, you know, um, and uh, George has uh, very kindly put a link uh, to the site there for anyone who wants to have a look at that. Um, yes, am you. I right if I'm remembering that you are launching the Kickstarter on the 1st of Feb? That's correct. That's the plan so far. Because you initially were going to start it previously, weren't you? And you changed your mind. Yes. The original date was uh, November 1st, I think. And then um, I read a lot of blog posts and other, you know, knowledgeable people who've gone through the whole process saying that you don't want to launch a Kickstarter so close to Christmas if you mm. can't guarantee that people will get it by then. So yeah. you know, I had to push it back. Have you made any um, any changes to anything in the time between sort of November and on now, well, or is, is it the same as it was? Yeah, it's like pretty much the same game. The only changes are, I guess, you know, graphics or like yeah. little word tweaks in the rule book, things like that. But there's there hasn't been many. Uh, That's a little bit of polish. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. a little bit of spit shine. No, absolutely one. That sounds really good. I'll be uh, definitely checking out as well. Yeah, do do check it's just out the my blog kind of as well. The blog is the blog is a read. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I was gonna say I, I would happily revisit the blog set blog several times. And I was like, the rule you have very kindly shared the full rule book on there, and I think it really it's does also give you a good on flavor the site as well. Yeah, yeah. So do do check out out the rules in the blog. There's a load of information on there, and I think it really gives you a good flavor of the game. So it's why I'm so excited to try it. Yeah. Even if I do have to wait until I get, get my backer yeah. copy. <laughs> well, we originally reached out to you for, through uh, our... Um... Our Tinder profile. Thanks to uh, Twitter. Uh, and we've been in you know, mm -hmm. conversation for a little while. Yeah. Uh, and we've been I've been really particularly excited to talk to you one for the fact that you know we're going to be starting our you know we've already announced that we're starting our uh, board game design journey and that we're going to be looking at doing a kickstarter um so uh, yeah yeah <laughs> we will put we, we will be looking to you know to, to you know for any tips and advice so uh, uh, that's that would be great <laughs> Definitely. anytime so yeah. many people have helped me on my journey. So, you know, if anything I could do to pass it forward, 
you know, I would love, yeah. love the opportunity. No, I'd say, what would your number one tip be? <laughs> Yeah, what would you want to be? Uh, I mean, you guys are pretty much doing it already. It would be, you know, to start the marketing, you know, even before uh, making the game or just, you know, start marketing as soon as possible. And, you know, you're getting the word out there. You have a great show. So that's, you guys are already doing way more than I did at your stage. Yeah. So one final question from me. Do you think there's maybe another game on the horizon after Sisyphus? Or are you just going to oh, yeah, kind of definitely. wait and see how it goes? Yeah, I think all okay. game designers always have, you know, a couple of games that they're always playing around with in their minds. I definitely have one or two uh, that I want to make after this. But, you know, cool. first things first, got to get, get there yeah. when I get there. Uh -huh. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be watching. Yeah. Thank you. We're not worried. in a good way, just like a... a <laughs> not in a good way. <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a swipe left, Tinder kind of way. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's well, like look. the good way. Uh, exactly. It's one of the great Why are you looking at me? Yeah. <laughs> For anyone out there who's watching live uh, and who is watching, you know, uh, playbacks, we have a quite a, a large following uh, on a playback. Um, Wong Min is actually uh, now a follower of the site. And uh, I'm sure if you uh, are registered and subscribed to the new site, uh, you can actually have chats and conversations on our new forum. So if you've got questions, and you haven't had a chance to ask them today, I'm sure if you pop your questions on the forum or even on this thread on the on the stream, I'm sure one min will happily respond. Is that okay? Yeah, no problem. Fantastic. So how, you, you how do you a... register to be on the forum, Chris? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, all you <laughs> so have natural. to do to get onto the forum is uh, visit our website, which is www.doalg.co.uk. And you can actually also get to it by diaryofalinkinggeek.com. Wonderful. It's a lot done. To type out, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is why we like doalg.co.uk. Even if Google thinks you're trying to say dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Click that autocorrect straight away. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Brilliant, George. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you like, for that. It's great. Yeah, I'll say it. If you do have any questions out there on Insight and for one minute, I'm sure Chris will make sure he gets that out to, to us as well before yep. the end of the show. So I say we keep, keep an eye on Kickstarter all the time for our latest things. And we always like to come with, with the latest new shiny from the Kickstarter that we've seen. Um, and this time is a little one I found called Otto. Uh, another lovely little tile placement game. Um, I say it's really simple in its design but seems to have a lot of replayability uh, it's been very popular in the fact that i think it's already over 500 percent funded and I, I can see why it's simple it's clean and just seems to have a lot going for it yeah i saw I that like it was funded design. in like eight hours or something like that something like that yeah, yeah it was eight hours yeah what is it like a like an abstract kind of yeah it's an abstract like tile abstract. lane type game yeah. i'd say I know, I, i'd sort of say it's like suro but instead of yeah. trying to move your ship around you yeah. try you score for the shapes i was gonna say it was yeah it was, i was looking it's at giving it, me it a like, suro vibe yeah yeah uh, with the squiggly parts. lines yeah lines <laughs> <laughs> line <laughs> thanks you're welcome yeah I'm, i also feel like sort of like forbidden sky in that the way you lay tiles puts components down but that's how you score the points oh, okay this. Okay. But when you you try and make your square your squares or the circles, and that depending on the how they get done, it's either little circles or big circles, and they score different points. Am I seeing that this comes with a tile tower? It does have a tile tower. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> I wish more games had a tile tower. Oh, yeah, I, I bought I one that. for Carcassonne, and it's very good. But you know, I kind of wish it just had one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the problem for me, for me is that I've got the big box version of Carcassonne with like about six ex of the expansions. There's about I six more well. I haven't had. So, yeah. So by the time you get a tile tower, it's taller than I am, I think. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's how it feels. Mm. No, it looks really nice. I mean, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a great designer, you know, a designer as in like the aspect and way things look. Um, and I and I love the abstract black and white with with the color. Uh, it, it just appeals to me. So I, I'm looking for look. I'll be looking at and checking this out myself. Yes. 
Well, I'm a visual to... person. <laughs> I shouldn't. <laughs> I know. But without further ado, let's move on to our discussion topic of tonight, which is co-op games. I say we've already mentioned about three, three tonight anyway, between <laughs> Sh- Sherlock Hogwarts and Sotero. So terror, but uh, it was good for you there already. So I suppose the big, biggest thing was like, sort of why we liked them and sort of how do people feel about them in general and how do you make get the most out of your co-op games? Well, I'll, I'll how, much it off. Ta- how much time yeah. we got left? <laughs> <laughs> well, oh yeah, how much time? We're slightly uh, over schedule, but it's fine. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, co-op games. I really like co-op games. Uh, I think it, it adds a new dimension of play. Then, uh, you know, it differs from... I'd say most, probably most games are competitive. Um, so it just, it gives you an opportunity to interact differently. But I think there are a couple of potholes that co-op games can fall into and it kind of depends on who you're playing it with. So there's there's a real danger of um, it, it becoming sort of, uh, nobody gets a turn because everybody's strategizing and coming up with ideas about what everyone should be doing on their turn. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it can turn into a dictatorship as well. Again, depending yeah, everyone, on everyone, everyone can defer to whoever the most experienced player in the room. Is. Yeah, I was going to, and therefore there, they might as well be playing it themselves. The table captain. The cards. Well, uh, it's yeah. called quarterbacking. Um, it's it's basically okay. yeah. There's the official term for that. If one person just takes control. Um, well, I thought that, the, that, that the, two, the two versions: the, the quarterbacking, which is where people so defer to the expert, person. and then there's yeah. table captain, who, which is the old the bad version of it where one person takes over and tells everyone what they should be doing yeah, and no that's one actually quarterbacking. Gets, that's... it's effective yeah. yeah where you effectively have one person playing the game with three people helping them move components yeah yeah, yeah. and then that I, I know i think that can happen uh particularly when you've got new players mm-hmm. like, you know mm-hmm. joining a game with with sees you know players that know what they're doing uh and then that table captain or the quarterbacker or whatever you want to call them um <laughs> i'll start advising said players um and, you know and it can detract from the experience um but it's, it's it's how you are with it i think and and how you take with it and how you deal with it it's, so, it's just yeah. one of the risks of co-op games but any yeah. it's, it's it's generally bad form to do that sort of thing so i think most good people that play games yeah. tend to try and step back and let people to make their own decisions just for it's for the fun of the game you don't have to be 100 percent efficient yeah to enjoy yeah. i games. mean you can you can um, kind of play them however you want as long as you're playing with people that are compatible with you yeah. um yeah. like because yeah. i'm sure that other approaches work well for other people i just like having my own turn and having agency over my own turn yeah, you don't like, want if i want to make a bad play that's going to screw everyone over that's on me yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, one of our viewers, Pete, makes a valid point. You know, he says he's got a friend who tends to prefer co-op games rather than competitive ones. And it's exactly as it is. It's down to your preference. If you like a co-op game, then great. If you like competitive, stabbing each other in the back, then, you know, it's maybe not for you. I would say, I, certainly, I like both. I, I, I find that when I play with a wife a lot, uh, because especially at the moment, because there's not a lot of other people to play, play with in person. Yeah. And there is, whilst we like our competitive games, there is a point where you don't want to be able to play competitive games all the time. And it's nice to play together against a game. And I find, find that aspect is actually yeah. very, ni- very yeah. nice. And I think it's a very good, a lot of these games are very well built for two players, probably for that exact reason. Yeah, and I agree because me and my wife like our co- cooperative games as well particularly when you're playing against a game that actually gives you a challenge. Yeah. Mm. yeah it's nice to unite against the game sometimes. It's mm. uh, good good for teamwork. Yeah. My wife, yeah, my wife is yeah. just... Uh, the yeah, she likes the competitive streak, so she likes it when there's a chance to be, you know, the villain. So yeah. one like Werewolf you like, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> and Jaws, yeah. She likes being <laughs> the, the shark in Jaws. So... Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I I do love co- uh, co-op games, but like, I, so I have a group of people that I tend to play Pandemic Legacy with, uh, and they they actually oh, have a house rule, uh, and the house rule is, you you play your turn and nobody else plays it for you, so you can you can strategize like you can discuss as a team, but on your turn you you can do whatever you want, like nobody's yeah, expecting okay. you to do anything. It is your turn to do what you want with. Um, I think like a good case for that is in pandemic actually like with the 
say you've got like a researcher and a medic and the researcher's like oh you know we we should really work on curing this disease and the medic's mm -hmm. like oh but what if it, it looks like it might break out over here you know there is not really a right call to make because there's randomness built into it with the cards mm -hmm. you might mm -hmm. go and cure everything and find out you didn't need to or you might go and research a disease and then find out that actually you should have cured it because now you've outbroken and you've lost you know there's no right call to make and i think you know for me i i want to be able to make that call whether it's right or wrong yeah no i definitely yeah, agree agreed. yeah i'll yeah. say speaking of right, right and wrong as i mentioned it with subterra that i think some for me another pitfall with these games sometimes is that it's very easy to get some unbalanced player characters that yeah, it, yeah it's, i mean, say i think pandemic the original pandemic is almost f fell into that trap with the researcher. Yeah, um, yeah. She's say for character, definitely. For Subterra, I would say it's the geologist. And for yeah. most of the Forbidden series, I would say the navigator. Yeah, and I would also say for Harry Potter, um, Ron is, could be, could be deemed as a little bit broken. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> with the combination of some of his cards, um uh if you if you get it right you you know you're just generating tons of lightning tons of power yeah um so pete has parked up and he says it's hard to tell you, hard to say to pick up a favorite of his he likes it's a toss-up bit between forbidden island and forbidden desert um but he's not yet to play have played his new one because he does have sky yeah but Sky's not one i've heard of that's I've an played... interesting series because they're actually like a trilogy of games. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, which is obviously the one that's on screen. I've not played Forbidden Sky, but I've played the others. Yeah. But yeah, I, I quite like them as well. They are tough. Yeah, so I've, I've played, played Forbidden, Forbidden Desert and it was punishingly difficult. Like, Even on easy, <laughs> isn't it? Not win. Yeah, I can only just be easy on uh, Forbidden I've, Desert. I've done easy. Uh, it's, it, I've, I've gone two levels up from that and that's when it just gets ridiculously hard. I was like, yeah. I have, I have beaten Des or both Island and Desert on Legendary with the wife, but it has taken as many playthroughs, and there comes a point where it's just luck. Yeah, the Legendary thing is, if you get lucky and that you have to play, that you get a nice seamless playthrough, then you can win. But <laughs> I, I think the Legendary is designed that you have to have a luck on your side to win. Yeah, I think yeah, most co-op uh, co games have an element of luck because you're playing against a, a, a game which is not sentient. Like it yes. has to, yeah. it has to throw a curveball sometimes. Yeah. So, you know, there's always going to be a luck element. I think for for co-op. Yeah. yeah, of the three of the Forbidden series, I think Desert is my favourite. Yeah, I think I think De Island's my favourite, but I'm, I'm a sucker for the original. Oh, see, Dan's telling us about his time playing it with De Dan. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes, hiding from the sun in desert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, some, some lovely yep. strat strategy in all, all the games. Yeah. Uh, and I'll say, one of my favourite co cards as well, uh, again, after seeing it online, Flashpoint, it's so simple, but so hard. Yeah, yeah I've, I've seen that it's difficult. Uh, the I've, amount of I've, times the building falls down on you. Yeah. And we've got it's a really good review while, of that right? on the website as well, haven't we, George? We do indeed. Yeah. So if you'd like to know more about Flashpoint, do check out the website. But Any yes, I've... games? Uh, no, I think you've pretty much covered it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I speak for both of us. Yeah. <laughs> I think the one yeah. I play the most is probably Pandemic. I've got all the expansions for that and everything. Uh, yeah, we've played so much Pandemic. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we were playing like legendary difficulty with like the different strains of disease. We got really crazy. Nice. That was a while ago. Yeah. I'm probably a bit rusty now. <laughs> yeah, I think our viewers tend to agree with Pandemic. They they like Pandemic as well. Yeah, um, it's a classic. Uh, Everyone loves it, Pandemic. Yeah, yeah. But the you know, Pete says he's lost many more times than he's won it. <laughs> yeah, I think most people have with Pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Right. Okay. Well, lovely good discussion there and lovely way to end the show. I'll say just a quick shout out for the next show on the 5th of February where our special guest will be Ed Stockton from BA Games talking about their new Kickstarter that will be coming. 
Uh, yep. So in the meantime, do check out the website, www.doalg.co.uk. And don't forget to also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Yeah. Uh, so, just one final thank you to One Mint. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you on the show, One Mint. Thank you for joining indeed. us. Bravo. And yeah. hopefully having... get, have you back again for your next Kickstarters. Yeah. Awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah. I had a quick question. How do I how do I follow if I follow you on Facebook, would I be notified when you guys go live again? Yes, you, yes, will. you will. All right. That answers my question. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, and that probably answers it for a lot of our follow, you know, our, our Facebook followers as well. So uh, it's been really good. Thanks, George, for hosting again this week. It's been yeah, it's much appreciated. Right. And until until next time, play more games. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.